Okay, welcome to the College of Complexes. My name's Don, and I'm going to be the moderator this evening. Uh, our show tonight is, well, our speaker tonight is, is Charlie Paydock, and he is going to be talking on the subject, Hillary Clinton's emails, and why she did nothing wrong. Why she did nothing wrong. Yeah, you tell him, Charlie. Yep. Okay. All right, so, now, um, no? All right, then, uh, let's have a warm round of applause for our speaker this evening, Charles Paydock. Okay, Charlie, come on down. Come on now, Charlie. Okay. Keep us away, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. A little way of introduction before we get into this PowerPoint. Um, I am a C-SPAN junkie. <laughs> And I'm watching these congressional hearings, and there's all sorts of things about email usage. And as it turns out, I'm a designated representative of the federal employees and have been for about 35 years. And I was directly involved in writing the government-wide federal regulations regarding email usage, and uh, have represented employees in instances of alleged misuse and I regularly give an introduction to new employees on, on aspects of email usage and I was somewhat surprised I, I when I booked this I didn't think the issue would remain current and would have been the campaigns would have been turned on to something new but it's still fresh in, even in today's news. Um, the, uh, the issue with e uh, emails, at least my experience was, and this is aside from the talk, but basically employees were, I counsel them that uh, not to use emails, send emails that were a threat, or if you're familiar with Hatch Act violations, that's prohibitions against political activities by federal employees. At this time of year in particular, they may get in arguments among themselves about political issues. And the main thing is, I, it's considered if you send an email for a candidate to your co-workers, it's considered, it's been determined to be the same as distributing leaflets or pamphlets. <coughs> and if it has a little solicitation for money at the bottom of it, you may have as many political emails still, uh, you're soliciting funds on behalf of a candidate, and that's a misuse of your workplace activities. The other things about emails are, I don't want to bore you with all of this, you gotta be cautious about sending blast emails. Like I sent out a, notices of personnel policies that go to thousands of employees. They have to be cautious in putting those out. And employees will often snitch on their each other to their bosses. Somebody who carries water to the boss will say, I didn't get that report from Joe that I asked for a week ago. And so they'll send it to somebody's boss. And I don't like snitches like that. The other thing about email usage, if there's any formal correspondence <laughs> using emails, it is sent in a traditional fashion, like a memorandum in hard copy, like a letter, and they're scanned and, and put as an attachment. That's the only difference from hard copy mailings in, in this. One other thing about email usage, if practices are in place and the employer knows for it, I don't really have a term for this, but it's some like they knew it and they permitted it. And if that goes on for an established period of time, you cannot turn around later and discipline somebody for that activity. The only other thing I'm gonna talk about here a little bit that doesn't concern emails, but in a sense it does, is about the United Nations, these non-government organizations in particular the Clinton Foundation, they're called NGOs, 
and I've been many, many years active in the United Nations Association and other international affairs discussion groups and things like that. So I have an interest in that and regularly go to things like that and have some personal views I'd like to share with you on that. Okay, let's rock and roll, boys and girls. Right. And I'm going to show you that Ms. Clinton, Ms. Clinton did absolutely nothing wrong uh, in the use of her communication tools. Oh, crap. I, you guys are going to learn something here. All right. This is called a clickbait issue. And now not all of you may be using this Facebook uh, means of communication, but a click, a clickbait issue, they sometimes give catchy headings to something to get you to click on the website, to direct you to the website, and they're usually full of advertising and to get you to, to read all the things on the website. And it's called the clickbait issue. Do you, it, it's, it's like noise. It's not information. It's, it's even bad advertising. It's just malicious commercials. And there's no valid information there, but this seems to have been one of them. The other thing is I wanted to say about this issue is I, I, I heard some things watching it which were basically inaccurate, and then I was reading some of these Facebook and email exchanges, and I heard even wilder claims and, <laughs> and statements that were just bizarre, even by career senior uh, civil service employees that simply were not accurate way, in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. All kinds of assertions that were just not inaccurate. Okay, uh, the major thing uh, about this whole thing, is this working? Are we all fine on this yeah. speaker? Yeah. All right, the major thing is, and I heard this from one commentator, as a matter of fact, on C-SPAN, she says, what are we wasting time on this? Does it, does it have anything to do with putting bread on the table? Absolutely, categorically not. This is about the big and not issues you could come up with. All right, my background in this, as I I'll give you here, I did negotiate social media, law, rule, and regulation. Um, I've represented employees in disciplinary actions for misuse. Uh, and I just had a case that came to my attention a week ago. Um, and the other thing is, I'm going to talk about this, this thing, this in, alleged investigations. Now, the other thing is, many years ago, I was a whistleblower myself to the Congress of the United States on how, in fact, investigations were being conducted or not being conducted. And we'll get into that later. I had collected 18 specific examples because I, much of the things I would do, employees would be an investigation and I had to spend all day reading these. It's called a case file. And you get these in alleged investigations. And they were very poorly done very often. And, and, that, and I said, this is just incredible. We have to work with these things. But it was not being done properly. And evidence is by still not being done properly. All right, disclaimer, are these my own views? I'm not speaking as a representative of the organizations I'm affiliated with. And, and I'm not officially uh, tied into the Hillary campaign. So you're getting the real truth here, guys and girls. Uh, and I realize this issue is about cut down the middle. So happy you are with me and happy you again me. And that's just too bad. All right, I knew immediately when she declared her uh, candidacy for president of the United States. Uh, the, uh, why should I vote out incumbents? Vote against George Washington? But anyhow, there were all sorts of nasty things. I see our emails kind of screwed up here. The red is showing up as black, but um, the, they, were, they took her logo and all sorts of things. Uh, controversial images were being put out regarding uh, the candidacy of Hillary Clinton here. We want Bernie. Where's Bernie? Yeah. Bernie. All right. The, the major thing is, this was put out by a conservative website. 
Uh, they would like to focus, they think the same thing, there's only three issues of concern to the voters in the United States. And they're very much upset that we were paying attention to the bizarre statements and positions of Donald Trump. <laughs> Which I guess we're supposed to have overlooked. Uh, needless to say, this is, this, is, uh, this is a less government website, and they're concerned about these three pinnacles that they think are significantly more important than that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this Benghazi issue because that's not why we're here. I just want to show you that it's been well known for many, many years that anybody in the diplomatic service of the State Department is often in a very precarious, <coughs> dangerous position in third world countries where there's very little law or effective law enforcement. As you can see here, that during the Bush administration, uh, uh, 22 embassy employees were killed, zero investigations. During the Reagan administration, there were as many as 318 deaths with one investigation, yet for some reason, during the Obama administration and the Republicans who control the committees, <laughs> we had two embassy attacks and a total of 13 investigations. I think there's a little skewed there in their interest in these events, unless suddenly they have some genuine concern about what's happening to the civil service employees of the State Department which I don't think is their concern. Uh, let's see, where are we going now? Oops. This is not right. Uh, Hillary Clinton, you got... End of the presentation, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Goes back. It skipped over a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, the rotator hey, Charlie, stick. Can you, can, can, can you do it without the slideshow? No. Oh. Uh, okay. Let me just see. Oh no, maybe it's just a little bit. All right. Uh, they maybe I'll speak from here. The Benghazi report. Uh, see it on that. I got it here. The, uh, by Trey Gowdy of Carolina headed it up. Um, and let me find that thing here. But anyhow, um, there was no finding. This is the Benghazi investigation. Uh, this cost $10 million was spent on this with no finding of professional misconduct or dereliction of duty culpability or, wrong, or wrongdoing by Hillary Clinton. Uh, having failed, then the, they, they inadvertently discovered that she had used a private email <coughs> service. They issued a report, if you are aware of this, it was 800 pages wow. uh, that there was no finding of culpability uh, whatsoever by the Secretary of State. Uh, they actually, I think I've got a thing in here, they actually were going to Republic, the conservatives were very much upset with this congressman, and for some reason they were calling for his, um, um, what do you call it, the president, the impeachment? impeachment, when in fact members of Congress are not impeached, but they're expelled. They figured he failed. He was supposed to get the goods on Hillary, and he didn't deliver. Well, that, that's what I mean. There's no genuineness. Now, they blew the whistle all together. This is the guy that, this is why he didn't get, one of the reasons he didn't become Speaker of the House is because he was on Fox News, and he gave away the goods. Kevin McCarthy. He said, everybody thought Hillary was unbeatable, right? Uh, but we put together a Benghazi Special Committee, Select Committee. What are uh, her, numbers. her numbers today? It was strictly put together, not to arrive at truth, 
or to, to emulate any concern for the for what happened to the people at that location, but instead pure pure politics. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Now we're certainly aware that Hillary Clinton, since uh, '92, uh, the Clintons have been under attack. Uh, she's been called a sur sur sadistic nurse in a mental hospital for a lady in Yeah, she's a nefarious character. <laughs> all right, and all of these crazy books are coming out now. I like the one in the middle. The guy claims he was in the Secret Service, he'll tell all book. But then immediately the reviewers ascertained, and it wasn't very difficult to do, that he was talking about events in one city when he was in another. So he did not have first-hand information. And they can't really say you saw what happened when you weren't there. But anyhow, people want to make money doing this, and people will buy it. Um, now, one of the startling things about the Republican convention uh, was that Hillary Clinton should be sent to prison. I don't think this is appropriate dialogue for a political convention. Uh, Lieutenant General Flynn got up and started chanting, lock her up, lock her up. Uh, and the crowd, uh, they followed it up by three speakers on the same day. This was relentless, but this is, this is what this political party has to offer me is to incarcerate this individual. That means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing That's to me. That's why you need a libertarian. Um, followed up by one of the, the, this one was just amazing. And we're going to see something about Mr. Christie in a little bit. Mr. Christie got up there, and I'm the great prosecutor. And I ask you now, ladies and gentlemen, is she innocent or guilty? And the crowd is yelling, guilty, guilty, lock her up. You can say it too if you want to lock her up. Lock her up. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about. And this guy here, now this is, look at this spot. This, this is amazing. This is a candidate for president, and he's got this bizarre kind of guy. And he's not he's sanctioning what this guy is speaking about. And this guy gets up there and is claiming that should be she should be shot for treason. <laughs> for email usage. You should be shot. <laughs> I did, it never occurred to me as a federal employee using emails that I could be put before a firing squad. It should have. I was also, in, I also had credentials as an information officer. I was really in trouble. Come on, guys. This is, what, where did they find this? Anyhow, uh, oh, now this one just came last, last week. This is very telling. And I, I kind of like Ron Paul in one respect. But he did come out with this, and he says, uh, you know, she didn't actually lie to the FBI uh, during the testimony, but she lied to the American people. Oh. Well, isn't this too bad? Yes. So she didn't lie. He says right out, this is last week, during the week, he says she didn't, what is it? She didn't actually lie. Um, he says even the uh, FBI guys feel a little guilty, but that's about it. And then he spelled out to marry American people. Um, it, it, uh, this one I like. It is not, uh, intent is not a necessary component for a violation of a statute. So. It wasn't, he's saying it wasn't even intentional. So? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pick you up for murder. <laughs> now, if you get in an automobile accident, we are going to kill you, young man. We are going to shoot you. 
because you had an accident with your automobile. Should we do that to people who have accidents with their cars? Yes. No. <laughs> Sometimes. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. You want the skivvy? You don't like what I say? You don't believe me? How about Associated Press then? Here it is. Fact check. Statement by Trump. Yeah, the old 33,000 are missing. Yeah, they sell. Read it. The, um, um, let me get back to my page here. If I can find it. Here we go. For use of a private server to store our emails was not illegal under the federal law. Her actions were not established as a crime. The FBI, and FBI investigated the matter to, and recommended advice to the Justice Department whether or not to bring charges. The director declined to, re, to refuse to refer the case. Instead, he said perhaps she is at most maybe careless. The matter has been a distraction to her campaign and fed into public perceptions that she can't be trusted. She did not break the law. This Associated Press, I think we can trust the wire services on this. Okay, what else? A lot of silly things are floating around there, like this one here about Hillary and Chelsea. These are just, this is what I mean. It's a lot of junk and noise on some of these things uh, that Hillary was really, or uh, Chelsea was actually responsible for. Whoops. Where would I, where to go? You, uh, you all forward it too far. Chelsea. Oh, there. <laughs> Chelsea was in. Chelsea. 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 Put her in jail. Put her in jail. And her baby, too. Put, her, put, her, put, her, put them all in jail. Yeah. 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 Put her all in comments. Put her all in comments. All right. Now I'm going to get into the boring part. If it is boring, this is how I present a case. Charlie, you backed it up again. Yeah. Quit hitting the button. Quit hitting the button, Charlie. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now, this is how I present a case, and the following issues are raised. I didn't, I didn't give a thorough and absolute because we'd be here all night, but this is how I, I usually raise the case. The following issues are raised. If, in fact, I was representing Hillary Clinton, as an employee of the government of the United States, and she came to me for assistance. We had faced with a potential disciplinary action, I guess, which would be death. <laughs> By execution. For using emails. <laughs> All right. All right. Basically, this is universal to the government. And by the way, Senior executive, she's a member of the SES, Senior Executive Service. All the personnel policies and practices apply to her as well to me or even the lowest clerk. There's no different or higher standards for anyone in that position. I guarantee you that is an absolute fact. You cannot have different standards for different employees. I've run into that many, many times. They tried to impose higher standards or penalties upon employees who carry a weapon. It is not authorized. There is one personnel policy in, in place, and that's it. We just do not have multiple ones because we'd end up with literally hundreds for every occupation and unique standards and things like that. So there's one personnel policy, what applies to Hillary Clinton, applies to me as well and anybody else employed in the civil service. Okay. There's a key term called disparate treatment. Um, I mean, she's regarded as the purest form of evil. Uh, anything you, this, there's a bias against this. And we're going to see further that she's, this is clearly an, a, a case of disparate treatment if I ever saw one. Um, but yeah, anything nasty to drive traffic to your website. Um, here's a good example. We're talking about emails, huh? Well, let's, let's give an example. Let's see what happened in the Bush administration. Um, 
and something like 22 million emails are missing suddenly. Ooh. 22 million. Uh, they were using their own email address, gwb43.com, Republican National Committee. This is the White House using this uh, private servers and email addresses. Did anything happen? This is when they got the, they were going after the eight attorneys and the investigation. Did we see any? Did we see here any chance of lock him up? Lock him up? Where were you then? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. All right. The other thing is, and I didn't know where to fit this in, but I'll be getting into it later. There was many as eight committee investigations and four agencies involved. Normally there's a chain of command. What is going on with this woman? That she is being assaulted by a multitude of directions here. If you've got one charge, are you milking this for all you can get or what? That's right. I mean, obviously, because why isn't there one action, one personnel action? You don't, you don't have a half a dozen. This is eight. What's going on here? This is not ordinary. Does this, does this merit this? That's what I mean. Email usage? <coughs> I, I, I don't understand it. Um, the other thing is, every federal employee, you get called into the office for an investigation. You don't get called before TV cameras and news media. These things are supposed to be done in private. They're not media events. This is a personnel action that if there's corrective actions to avoid embarrassment. This is a universal government law personnel policy regulation. This is not just a good idea. You don't, this isn't, and the term they use is a media circus. That's what this is. This is, this is not, this is not how the government does it. We're supposed to do this. If I, I don't even discuss cases at all with coworkers or anything. And I say, oh, what's happening to Susie? I say, well, I changed the subject. You know, even I, and a little thing, but certainly something like this, uh, you don't do that. Another thing is, uh, this is one that really bothers me, is that there are very strict time limitations in terms of imposing discipline or taking action. This has to be the record. I mean, supervisors will not store up criticisms. The reason for this is, is in order to defend, the burden of proof is on the employer, the accuser, and then the other side has to recreate the situation. Recreating a situation from seven and a half years ago, from 2009 when she started using emails, this is unheard of. I've never even heard, I've had cases dismissed for six months. 12 months because they didn't undertake any action. I said, I'm handicapped in recreating the situation. Stories change when you talk to witnesses, even within the same day, two or three, let alone years. Try and find the people involved in this situation, if you can. They're possibly not there any longer. You've got to, this has got to be timely in some fashion. Uh, the reason you do this is that it allows the defense to claim harmful error. Had you done it correctly, would you conceivably have arrived at a different conclusion? In this case, absolutely, totally yes. Harmful error is a very common defense. You did not follow the procedures. And this one is like a procedural nightmare. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, now there's another thing. I hear some, oh my, she had a personal email. And using a government equipment. For the beginning of time, federal employees have reasonable personal use of office equipment. When I'm at work, I can go into the hotmail 
And this you may not, I don't, don't tell anybody, please. But I've actually done some stuff for the college of complexes. Oh, no. I'm a government no. computer. No. Like a website. I felt it. I felt it. <laughs> uh, and would you believe that for many years, the phone number for the college of complexes was, guess what? Your My office. <laughs> Do you see me in prison? Do you see me before execution squad? Um, as a matter of fact, and I didn't, I'm not going to get into detail on this. If it was a real case, I know for a fact, at least one agency, if not others. Uh, in fact, require employees. I don't know the reasons why behind this. It's way beyond my need to know right now. But federal employees are obligated because of these systems and browsers and whatnot. I was obligated to get a Gmail account strictly for work-related reasons. I didn't read the details. I didn't ask why other people, but you had to get Gmail accounts in order to get the system email. I don't know why, but it seems to be the case with other employees. So now you come along and say, oh my, you're using personal email, but in fact, you obligated and made me do it. As I said, if I didn't get a Gmail account, I wouldn't have access to the email system. So I didn't have any choice in the matter. But now you're gonna come along and say, oh my, you have a private email account, Mr. Paydock. That's to the yes, that's to for you, pal. All right, next one is um, these are just not like any factors imposing discipline. Now, was the offense intentional or technical or inadvertent, or what it was it committed maliciously or for gain? Yes, yes, none of those qualify. but inadvertent, malicious. The thing is, people do things that are malicious in the workplace. It certainly is not malicious. I'm not aware of any personal gain. As a matter of fact, it seems like routine duties. Now, the thing you have to think in mind is why why would why would Miss Clinton? We'll get into this later. Be cautious or worrisome about government emails. Well, I think she had intentions of running for the office of the president of the United States. Now, looking at about half a dozen web pages, most of which are kind of bizarre and crazy, it appears that some parties have been after the Clintons for a good many years. And they have no qualms whatsoever about making up conspiracies. There's probably 22 conspiracies against the Clintons. Uh, the last one I saw recently was something about they were purposely dealing with these people of another sexual orientation for the express purpose of destroying the family. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Which of course is true. I anybody everybody knows that the Clintons have been plotting this for years uh, to rid the American society of family nuclear families. You know, but um, yes uh, she had to be cautious, and with good, very good, solid reason. Uh, it's not disputed that, yes, she was, they had a target on her. And she didn't, whether it's merited or not, you know, I just told you, they were going to throw that guy out of Congress because he didn't win the case. Uh, they said, get rid of him, he failed us. All right, next one is, uh, her employee past record. As far as I know, Hillary Rodham Clinton has never been disciplined, even one day suspension, even a letter of reprimand for her service as a government employee. Um, okay, what else? Here's the kicker, and this really comes into play, is something called an established past practice. Was that an established past practice within that office? specifically, and you can't get any closer than the State Department. Classified data was found in the personal emails of Colin Powell and aides to Condoleezza Rice out of the New York Times. 
By the way, nothing in this slideshow is from one of those goofy websites. I really don't like them. I, I made one mistake once reporting these strange things, and I only rely on real solid, feet on the ground information, reliable sources, not the, not the wacky ones. And if you want to pursue that, please be my guest. I don't have time, I want to waste time with strange, stupid stuff. Uh, the Inspector General Office found 90 other individuals in the State Department who used their personal email for business. So if you're going to get Hillary Clinton, we might as well go back, since we're going back seven and a half years, and there appears to be no limitation on this. These people ought to be knocked on their door and told, you're going to face, oh, we're going to shoot you now. But, all right, now there's a thing, double, a double standard. Um, Powell and Rice staffers received classified info via personal email. None of this is disputed. Uh, many of the messages Powell sent in that role have, have been lost. Oh, no. He lost them. How could that be? Isn't that... <coughs> A, ter a, a bad activity, um, and in all all the cases, however, as well as the Clintons, the information was not marked classified at the time the emails were sent, according to the State Department investigators. We'll get a little bit further into this marking uh, classified mails. Let me tell you, I stand before you. I have no idea whatsoever as a files officer, an information officer of the United States government as to what constitutes a classified document. And I don't know anybody who could say that confirmed. You have to use your judgment in these regards. Um, next one. All right. Um, like Hillary Clinton, this is a just killing up. Uh, Colin Powell used a personal email account during his tenure at the State Department. Uh, he was not aware of any restrictions, nor does he recall being made aware over, over the four years he served at State. Same thing again. He, didn't, he did not take any hard copies of emails with him when he left office, and thus he has no record whatsoever of his emails. Again, here's a guy who has no emails at all. Hillary turned over 55,000. This guy turned over zip, zero, nada, nothing, zero. What's going on here? Okay. Um, to show you where these rules are just being negotiated and coming into effect is that it was just in this April that uh, members of Congress were banned from using third-party web-based mail applications, such as Yahoo, Gmail. I saw this attack. They got snuck into by some malware, and I saw this happening. Uh, I said, uh-oh. And all they, they began by saying was, uh, don't open up uh, your email if you have these accounts with these. Use your uh, at <coughs> uh, house.gov accounts. Okay, here's another one that's really kind of fun. Container? Yeah. Can I be a thing too? Oh, all right. All right, here's another one. That guy that was going after Hillary, right? Oh my God, you got emails, Hillary. Look what he's using there. TreyGowdy.com? At the same, can you believe this? At the same time, He's ranting and raving in Congress, and he's got two separate email accounts and servers. And he's going, oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. What can we do? He actually, you got to have guts to do this. Really, he didn't know he was doing the same exact precise thing. <laughs> oh, let's go to the chairman of the other committee. He's another guy. This is terrible. Woe is me. What can we do? 
Look at this guy using Gmail. It's on his business card. Oh, oh, oh. Here's another guy. Oh my, this is terrible. Uh, oh, let's, I told you, now we'll get around to the great prosecutor. He said, I will prosecute her. And look what this guy does with his email. He's only missing 10,000 of them. A small player, right? But I tell you what, he, oh, he, uh, he had a, his personal email account. He put even took the hard drive home. <laughs> oh, he said, oh, this was campaign strategy and press, press uh, strategy stuff here. You know, <laughs> he just decided he wanted to take over 10,000 emails. He didn't want anybody to see because he likes privacy, I guess. He's a private kind of guy, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Talking about that bridge. Yeah. All right, there's another one. This is a Republican. This is a defense guy. He says, I don't know. I can't tell. He says, I'd be in more trouble than Hillary. <laughs> he should be shot. So, yes, another guy that should be shot. He's a military guy. He says, man, I, got, I was confused. All right, let's see the next one here. Oh, um, <laughs> no, this is great. Talking about emails. Now, this is emails that are not allowed. And Mr. Trump and his sons were soliciting campaign money overseas, which you are not allowed to do. You've got to have an address in the USA before you start contributing to campaigns. And you're telling me they didn't know they were soliciting overseas. Now, these guys don't know anything about running a campaign or how to solicit money so they probably begged off on this one and said well we didn't know we ain't done this before you know but anyhow trump and his sons uh, were soliciting money in violation clearly in violation of the statute regarding campaigning uh we're not done yet I keep hearing, oh, that Miss Clinton was a liar. She lied. She lied. Now, Trump went to see these guys for writing a book about them. He said he didn't like the book. He said he didn't like what they said about them. So, he, but they caught him in 30 lies. And I love his, he admitted it, but he said he blamed others for the error or explain that the untrue thing really was true in his mind or, this is, or because he saw the situation more positively than others did. This is ridiculous. It's a good answer. I'd love him to have to use this. I just see things more positively than you do. Chuck, why did you lie to us? I just saw it more positively. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is. <laughs> uh, now, here's another one. Government wide regulation. And before you discipline, apparently she did uh. discipline. You're saying, oh, inadvertent, inadvertent thing is punishable. Not so, my friend. Not so. You have to be given an order, and very much you have to establish the clarity with which that. That order was given. You just don't say, well, they should know, should have known this. No, the clarity very much determines if there is, in fact, any punishment, what that punishment might be. The clarity in which the employee was put on notice of any rules that were violated in committing the offense. Now, here's the thing about this. She's a member of the Senior Executive Service, and well, I'll show you a slide we're coming to it. Every office agency of the government of the United States is somebody known as a CIO, the Chief Information Officer. This is the person in charge of the computers and the emails and social media and stuff like this. I assure you, I can guarantee you that that department was fully aware and setting up 
the chief executive officer of that agency in business and knew everything about what was going on. They went regularly in meetings. This is part of the inner circle, and nothing that was done was clandestine and was done without their full, complete knowledge and concurrence. <laughs> Absolutely categorically. That I, would you, this, if there's one employee, believe you me, if I call the service desk and need some help, they say that's just that jerk on 15, Charlie. But if the, <laughs> if the senior executive yeah, right. calls, there's usually an army of people dispatched and usually very knowledgeable ones who know precisely what's going on. Actually, I have pretty good service. I've got Wi-Fi in my own office. Pretty cool. It's, it's pretty nifty, you know. I'm the only guy who's got that. You know. Yeah, you got it. All right. Now, here's another one. This really is when you discipline somebody, you always ask, well, they did allegedly did something wrong. Well, how did it hurt the mission? Or was there... Was it necessary to do some corrective action? Or how much did it cost the government? How much did it cost? How much money was misused or lost? Any in this case, I look to it and I can't find a, a penny. Zero. There was there was no nothing happened to the agency. There was nothing on the diplomatic relations of the United States. They were affected. There's no country reference. There's nothing. So you're saying, oh my God, there was terrible actions. Well, how do you determine the penalty if there's no harm? How was the agency hurt in accomplishing its mission? Was it delayed? Or did they have to have other people come in and work six months to correct the mistakes or what? Nothing, zero. What, what, well then, why are we here? <laughs> That's what I would ask. Um, how are the U.S. foreign affairs affected? Is there anything that I, I can't find out? If you can find out for me, let me know. I'll give you my email address, my personal <laughs> server. Uh, diplomatic relations, what needed, what country was, what diplomatic relations were, were affected? Zero. I don't know, I never read anything. Uh, what was the adverse effect of any treaty or trade policy? Zero. So where's, it's called the nexus, what's the connection? How do you know it was bad? Was it a little bad or great bad or just a feeling? I always say that, I guess it's just a feeling you have in your heart that it was harmful to the United States. <laughs> you know, but there's no evidence. All right, let's go on the whoops. Let's skip one here. Oh, that one we got. All right, records management. This is kind of boring. Uh, I mentioned the chief information officer. I looked up the department and the state department. They seem to have qualified people there. As a matter of fact, they must have immeasurably qualified people because they they've got 250 international offices that they have to establish communications with on an ongoing, uninterrupted basis. And they're sending out six million emails annually. This is not a small operation. They know what they're doing, and they certainly knew and set up so that the, the senior executive could communicate with those offices in an appropriate fashion. Uh, the other thing, uh, you or I, if you'd like, could become a virtual fellow. Talk about sharing documents over the email. You may or may not be aware of this program. You might be interested in this, Don, but you can become a cult consultant to the State Department. And I assure you, they I don't believe you're going to need security clearances either on this. I doubt that very much, because it's fairly expensive to get a security clearance. Uh, let's see. A lot of things people don't understand is that a large segment of the workforce has already works at home. As a matter of fact, you have to stay set up to work at home. They call it COOP, continuation of operations. Every federal employee is required to be set up and can work 
from their home. And they test the systems, the connectivity from now and then. Every now and then I'll get a call. Are you, are you there, Charles? This is the emergency guys. <laughs> All right, uh, use of government officials. Uh, okay, the Federal Records Act. Um, as long as they're preserved. That's the only thing they ask. Um, she had every expectation they'd be preserved because all of her communications, nine out of ten, were going to government employees. Um, and when they asked, they quickly sent the records in. Oh, this one you cannot see, but I wanted to throw that in here. It's missing in here because you know what you can't see in here? Actually, you will because our equipment isn't working too well. Guess what you see in there? There's a confidential communication from the uh, techie people. And you know where it was sent? It was sent to cbadoc at hotmail.com to my house. Uh, the laws. Listen, Charlie, we're running out of time here. We've well, got, we got? Well, it's 7.12, and we got to finish the Q&A by 7.50. No, well, let me finish. Let him finish. Okay. Yeah, I got it all. How much more time do you reckon? Well, well, we'll let you know. Let him finish. Let him finish. And you thought I was bad. Let him finish. All right, the laws, um, Federal Records Act, you can get through these. Uh, the, the government also has an open data thing which says we're supposed to open up communications. It contradicts it, so doing that. Uh, Whitby links is basically, from my perspective, a worthless bit of information. Uh, how they came up with 23,000. Uh, another thing is, regarding this confidential, you know, this, it finally occurred to me that every now and then, co-workers we were putting these on emails. Uh, and I, I said, I know I've seen that someplace, <laughs> but it's not universal. Um, classified documents, there's four types, there's a little confusion about it. Um, the uh, Regarding the sensitivity, the well, I won't get into it. There's a legal term called de minimis. What that is, is regarding this, first it began that she maybe had a hundred classified documents she sent. And then it went down to eight. And then it went down to three. And then it went down to zero. And there's a legal concept called de minimis, which is at the bottom here. And out of 55,000 emails, this is clearly a case where you could claim de minimis, meaning that's an insignificant number to take any great action on. It's a minimal number in, in, in comparison to the about six million communications, we're talking eight or three, uh, that's not the way the law works. You gotta have it over a period of four years she was secretary. Um, all right, they're saying that none of the emails are classified. Um, actually, the rules only came in effect after this is very important. The rules took effect after she left the agency. Um, so that they say that she may have not violated. Oh, I liked it. She may have not violated. She did not violate the text of the law, but they argue she violated the spirit of the law. <laughs> Give me a break. Give them a break. That's ridiculous. Uh, another one I heard. Oh, there was gross negligence. There's no such charge. <coughs> That's not a conduct issue. <laughs> That's a performance type thing. There's a distinction between performance and conduct. Meaning you didn't do your work or do it properly is not a criminal or 
punishable charge. You may go pull another route to deal with the issue. It's just like an employee who is a guard, and let's say they weren't at the guard station. You don't punish them. You, you go through another route. There's a distinction in labor law, even, between this, which route you choose. So there's no such thing as gross, like, they say, oh, there's gross, no, it doesn't exist. Discipline procedures. Here's the basic things you can do. You can do nothing. You can do some administrative action. And then you can go to a criminal. There's three levels. Oral, administrative, and criminal. To make that jump to the third one, not easy. You really got to have some theft, some profit to go into the criminal charges. I rarely see that. They, I've had many, many cases. They're all reviewed for severe penalties, and almost never is there a criminal action taken. <coughs> um, investigations. Three things I was yelling about with Congress. They're undertaken when they should not have been. They were not done when they should have been done, or they were poorly done or incomplete um, or excessive. Um, one other thing, there's another, even a thing you could accuse management of. This. There's a thing called excessive abuse of management authority. They said they, they sent out, this was, this was facts, this was baloney, but eight, eight committee hearings and four agency investigations to me is an excessive abuse of management authority. That's, there's nothing that merits that. Uh, another thing about these NGOs, about the Clinton Foundation, I've known about them for years. These are, these are like little charities that deal with like feed the children, man. I mean, uh, they deal with climate change, malaria prevention, and uh, global landmines. These are like do good stuff. And then you, you, you're saying the Clinton Foundation is one of these. I don't understand why people don't want that. Do you want children to die? Clinton Foundation yes. was working on HIV uh, pandemic. Do you say stop what you're doing? We want children to die? What kind of sense is this? There's no logic. <laughs> I don't understand it. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't, this is what I want to get it. Are there people that apply for jobs? Every day of the week we used to get applications and resumes. Yeah, you refer them to personnel, whatever, I, you know, they're going to communicate with them. The thing you got it that just came out is, the guys who were really mucking around were the think tanks. Those are the guys who were taking cash. Uh, from foreign governments and trying to influence policy because that's their primary function is to influence policy. Those are the ones, and this was not the Clinton Foundation by any way, means, way shape, or form. Anyhow, we spent $20 million on this. We didn't get anything. Uh, she was not guilty. I, there's the, the exact words of the FBI guy. Uh, the other thing is Clinton was going to the Russians. Uh, I think he crossed the line in that regard. Now that's something that's inappropriate. But look, just a little picture of files. Um, the other thing about documents, we'd like to see the IRS of Mr. Trump. Um, there's nothing that stops him from making this public. I just wanted to throw this in. But he's basically a nice guy. He went down, and he concerned about the people in Louisiana that was flooded. He spent 40, he spent 49 minutes, 49 seconds. seconds. They made a little video thing, and he got on his jet and left town. That's great. Oh, right, well, anyhow, you can know that you're all graduates of the college complexes. And, and, and they're just out there. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Okay. Let's get into the question and answer session.
session. Okay, Charlie, you're going to... Um, all right, I'll call on people. Uh, Joe has his hand up. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah, Charlie. Oh, don't right. even think of sitting down because you're not going to. <laughs> you are familiar with the DOD 5200 series publications, right? I'm not terribly familiar with the government. Well, you the, should have been. You held a security clearance to hold your federal job. Uh, you know. Believe me, you should have at least read them. <laughs> now, you seem to be making a mistake here or a misrepresentation for one point. You're talking about a job discipline action and all the federal regulations in the civil service. The actual accusation is national security violation. There is a difference. No, there is not. There's a, it's kind of question. What? Discipline is progressive. That's inherent to anything. And that's what I tried to show you that it, you, that's why there's even the thing called the penalty guide. And this applies to the State Department, regs. That's what she's operating under. And they have a penalty guide. Discipline can be arranging from simply oral to written to suspension, 5, 10, 15 kind of days, up to up criminal now. action. No, no, so what they do in the oh, military yeah, we'll is very nice and interesting, and I'm very happy for them, but I think they're pretty much parallel. As a matter of fact, okay. I know they do. All right, because but of it doesn't all right. All right. All right. There now. is degrees. <laughs> all right. Now, now, Joe, I know you said you had a follow-up question, but Where we got we got to let other people have a chance. Okay, go we'll ahead. To, we'll get to round two. Tell, tell me the security of what right. country was all right. affected, All right, Joe. sir, sir, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. I want to know why uh, the Attorney General doesn't prosecute Hillary. She could get, uh, uh, Gi Giuliani says that, that he, he could get her for racketeering, but she won't even bring up the case. The other thing, she knew she was doing wrong. She was in the Watergate hearings against Nixon. She knew it was wrong to, to suppress uh, 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 documents well, and Number records. one, I hate to kill the messenger, but Mr. Giuliani, I think, has lost it. I've seen him on TV, and I've heard him, and this is the same guy who said there were no attacks. Uh, During the Bush administration? Yes. And honestly, I don't think he's there. I think he's getting on, and I don't think he's I don't think he's a valid source of information. I heard Hillary on a talk show. Okay. Wait, 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 no, I can ask. On, okay. on a talk show, she said that she uh, had a private service. She didn't want a government service yeah. because she didn't want her record subpoenaed. She admitted she was wrong. She, she even last week she was admitting she made a mistake. If, if she, if she did a crime, she should do the time. They should lock her up. I showed you that there's every configuration of work at home arrangement. It's 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 not even pursued. The workforce is required to be set up to work at home. There's nothing wrong with having that server. Zero. Nothing wrong. How many times do I have to say that? Absolutely nothing wrong. All right, all right. Denise, do you have a question? And you do not you do not have that absolute, you don't understand discovery process. If you think you get everything in the world, no, that's not the way the world works. I've never submitted an information request. And let you tell me, I tell you I've done over a thousand. All right. All right. Will you let us talk now? <laughs> <laughs> For Christ's sake. Oh, I've heard these. Ooh. I love them. Yeah. I get these. Not allowed out. to work oh. from home due to the severity of my job. How do I go about working from home then? What? How do you? How, how do, you? do I get to work from home? You said that we can work from home. They told me due to what I do at work and due to the classified information we handle, we cannot work from home. You have to see the negotiated agreement on your agency. We don't have one. We don't have a union. Well, it, that there's your solution. Get a union. Yep. Well, I'm gonna have to talk to you about that because you told you. Yeah, you have you to. Said you work from home. I can, you I know, about doing that. We came. Well, I work. The union was actually in trusteeship. A few of us put it together, and we began gradually. One of the things we did was the first thing was to have flex time. We could come to work between seven and nine. Um, 
And then we went to these flexi days where you get one day off, you have like nine hour days. And then we went to full work at home. So it took a while, but yes, the union was the non-existent, existed only on paper, but a few of us decided to do it. And I had one of the first employees in the United States because we were the only office in the country that had some of those things. There's a lot of stories behind that. There was opposition to it at first, but no, it depends. Now, now they're encouraging it. Somebody came in and they want it. We don't have tests. There's no one, no employee in certain units has a desk. There's no such thing as a phone at a desk. That's disappeared. You come in a hotel and you look at what desk is available. Uh, floor 15, desk 9. So, you know, it's a negotiated process. You know. All right, anything else? Okay, I have a question, if I may. No, 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 I don't want to be on the camera. Um, <laughs> Supper? Um, Charlie, listen, then answer to me, educate me, please. How come she didn't do nothing? How come she didn't go to Benghazi when, when it was happened with American diplomat? How come she's just, she's like, oh, oh, really? And she didn't do Nothing. She wouldn't go visit. We're not here. Number one, I'm not an Can expert on Benghazi, me? and I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, we're not here to discuss like, it. Let him nothing. answer the question. I'm not here, and I'm, I don't, wouldn't say that it's obligated, required to. Uh-huh. No. Okay. That's Bra absolutely, like, she's got 250 offices. Yeah. Okay, Brom. Brom. Rum. Yes. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, uh, forgive me if they don't rise, but uh, I, I, I like to think <laughs> rather than, than balance. Uh, the, in 2009, when uh, Hillary was about to become Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State, held a dinner in Washington uh, for Hillary and the uh, past Secretaries of State. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I know they are. Uh, 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 Colin Powell and. Uh, a bunch of them. And at that, she asked, at the end of the dinner, she asked that the other secretaries of state, uh, besides herself, uh, give Hillary some advice on uh, what they had done. And uh, Colin Powell's uh, suggestion was that he, she continue to use her uh, private servers. Uh, he wrote her a memo on, to that effect. Uh, why? Because those lines would be more secure because the more lines you have, and they're, they're not, if somebody wants to tap into uh, State Department secrets, they go to the State Department uh, system. Uh, so, you know, maybe uh, at that point in history, uh, she uh, was actually making the uh, messages that she was getting uh, or sending more secure. Now, uh, whether that continued to be the case, I don't know. That's uh, for others to determine on the basis of evidence I don't have access to. So what's the question? Um, I lost one while. The question is... I, I, can, I can tell you this. It, the argument is, and, and it is a valid one, that uh, there was his advice. Colin Powell came in and tried to modernize the agency to use electronic communications. And uh, there are, there is a valid argument that in fact may be more secure. 
Um, everybody and their brothers trying to crack into the government agencies. <laughs> and yeah, private private thing could, could in fact be superior. But wasn't it also true that electronic communications were a lot more open and a lot less reliable back when Colin Powell was Secretary of State versus when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State? I don't know what that means. Emails? No. Yeah. Like the Russians always trying to. <laughs> okay. Well, there's no expectation of privacy in any email you follow. All right. You know, He's got I mean, his. They, I don't know government oh. encryption. Uh, All right. But He's got his follow up. All right. Okay, my follow up was. You realistically evaded the point, because the point is not a, an administrative job action to terminate an employee. The charge, basically, with the emails is a national security issue, saying she mishandled it and leaked it. There is a difference there. Where did you... Where, I hate to ask the question with a question, but I suppose what country was affected? What what operation of national security? How do we know until we find out what she lived? The burden of proof is on the accuser. Otherwise, you don't know. Uh, we, You've got, you are, listen, no. you're the employer, you're making the accusation. If you don't have the evidence, then you're just saying there was a matter of national security. I said very simply, what continent, what country? You're what still saying world, employer. And you have nothing. <coughs> I'm waiting for an answer. You're still saying employer. What wrong country, for wrong what point? Country, she's an employee. What do you think she is? What would you say she is? She's not an employee. Don't ask that question. What is her status? Get into it, but she's not, not an employee. It's like this. We put people in jail for a lot less when it comes to classified documents, Charlie. Where? And we do it every day of the week Where? in this country. Where? Go to Leavenworth and ask, ask them. There's they, about a hundred of them there. Knows where they, as a matter of fact, the, uh, one of the things about the FBI investigation, Joe, and it was on one of those slides, was they looked back <laughs> and they could not find any case, similar cases. That's why I brought up the slide of disparate treatment. In determining the penalty. Then I, I got some news. Not, they were, well, if you don't, you can disagree with me, and you're also you disagreeing the with the chief of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and he looked into all the cases. He cited the cases. He says, we looked at what we've done in other instances, <laughs> and this is what our decision is based on this, and I concur with him entirely. He looked into those. Oh, well. Do you have access to, to all these cases that people are shot and killed? I didn't how say did, they were shot and killed. How many were there last year? Never said that. How many were there? I said they were jailed. How many were jailed last year? Oh, come on, Charlie. It's public record. <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. Please. You know. Federal court's published point. decision. I made my point. Court marshal's <laughs> public decision. You got a feeling in your heart. They're public records. <laughs> How many, Joe? Ten? All right. Charlie, I believe that we need to move on to our next questioner. Will, will, will the honorable gentleman please move on to the next question, please? <laughs> and we need, our moder we need our moderator back up, Don, please. <laughs> He, he left. Yeah, yeah. I think he left. That no. means it's you. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do now is we got we've still got some hot questions left. Anybody else who has a question? Andy. Andy. Oh God. All right. Stand up, Andy. Question I have: uh, You uh, presented a whole evening of defending Hillary on the question of emails, right? Yeah. 
Is that, that like, so. is that like defending a serial killer that's killed like 27 women, but he's accused unjustly of killing this one over here that somebody else killed? <laughs> so you say, he didn't do it, he didn't do it, he's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent. I don't think she killed anybody. Where, body where, of innocence. where is she a serial killer? Use an email? Uh, that's an analogy. <laughs> Andy, we're talking emails here. That's what I'm talking about. Why, uh, my question to you uh, is... Emails. My question... Come on, this is a silly email. You know, let me ask my question. All right. <laughs> Why? Do, what is your point in presenting this uh, presentation tonight about the emails being a non-issue? when we could be talking about a whole bunch of other issues that Hillary is criminally involved in. Why did you pick this one rather than talk about the others? Can you tell us that? Can I answer that one for you, Charlie? Yeah, you answer. I asked Charlie specifically to do this presentation because he has a lot of knowledge on the email account. Yeah, I know about this. And with his rantings and ravings, I said, Charlie, I dare you to put a speech together, and I think he did a damn good job in preparing a good I don't speech. Know these others from the yeah. 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 It's the area I know. I'm watching, yeah. Yeah. I'm watching TV, and I said, hey, this is all a lot of hooey. 30 more minutes. Yeah. 30 more minutes. You know. <laughs> all right. I have a question. All right, all right, all right, let's get him over here. In answer to your question is, this seemed to me like, this is the numero uno, Andy. They're sinking all their money on this one, Phil. And Trump begins his speeches with this email. So, I don't know what the other ones are, honestly. But he's sinking his, everything he's got. If by beginning his speeches, uh, on this one. He's spending, putting a lot on it. That's the first thing he talks about on his stump, stump, stump speech. So why would he, you know, and I keep hearing about it, so. All right, what do you got, Danny? All right. All right, so there's a new investigation going on now, right? I mean, what do you think of that, of the new investigation of Clinton and Hillary right now? What do you mean? I mean, do you think they might find anything in this new investigation? You, um, the longer you go on any of these, the less, and this is from the pros, the longer you go the less likelihood there's going to be something. If you don't have it now, it ain't going to come out later. I, I would find that highly, that's what I mean. There, you don't always, you only have half the story when you go in, and the other side is the other half. But be honest with you, if they ain't got it now, I'm, these are, what prosecutors have to decide. Should we go with what we've got and lose? If you lose, you know. But this isn't a very strong case, at least what I'm looking at. Okay. Despite what my friend Joey is upset. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Any more questions from the peanut gallery? Yes, back here, back here. All right, all right. So, so, Charlie, what, what's the connection, do you think, between Hillary and Wasserman Schultz trying to suppress Bernie Sanders' campaign to squash him? What, what's your opinion about that? These are emails. Politics. Just politics. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't squash us. Don't squash us. I don't. They. That's just one side over another. They. I'm not that familiar. I. I see all the. I'm. I mean, I don't feel the burn, but. Um, I'm sorry. I don't place a lot of credibility that. They were able to. You know, voting is voting, and you know, um, I think I'm realistic enough to say 
Oh, we were cheated. Yeah, this is the thing that Bernie's. I don't even read those. Be honest with you. Oh, we were cheated, man. No, we lost. We tried hard. We just didn't get the votes. Come on, curl up. If you've been, you know, if you've been to enough elections, you know, uh, our elections stolen probably in the past. There's, uh, you guys, this stream wise, know there's been some questionable ones. Uh, they just lost. I gave the thing here on the on the super delegates. I have no, nothing worse the super delegates. I think they're probably important to have. The reason that the Republicans ran into problems is that they didn't have super delegates, and so you had all these. You didn't have the cop. The that's what I mean. Those are the people who are the party, and they earned, paid their dues, and by virtue of that, and then these other people show up and become delegates, like the young lady in my neighborhood. You know, it's nice. She wanted to be a delegate, got some 500 signatures. But she's never really done anything before for the Democratic Party. You know, all of a sudden she's voting. You know, it's a start. You know, but should we tell the people that are elected officials who've been working for the party for decades that you know, not the same? But anyhow, yeah, I know they got more votes. What can I say? Dust yourself off and try the best. You know. <coughs> Try for the next election. That's what that's what it's all about, you know. Okay, are we uh, done with questions, or do we? Let me get up there. Are we done with questions tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, let's did. let's thank Charlie again for another wonderful speech. All right. We are now entering our infamous rebuttal period. Yes. 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 How many of roughly have rebuttal speakers yes. just tonight? We all have rebuttals, man. All right. Uh, let's go to four minutes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be used. we got a clock up here. I'll forego my giving a rebuttal tonight just so that we can keep no, everybody moving. No, no. Well, 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 if there's time at the end, I'll give it. But let's uh, get these things started. So there's a clock. I'm going to turn the computer on so you can see the clock, and then we'll go from there. All right, four minutes. Let's get the on deck chair so we don't have to waste time. Okay. Now comes the fun. Charlie was the custodian of documents for GSA. He knows all about security. He's, at least he's supposed to, but he claims absolute ignorance about it now saying it's discretionary. No, it's not. Oh, uh, and for a Secretary of State who has gone through all the briefings and everything else to claim the same thing is really ridiculous, especially documents that pass through her private server. She should know if anything was in them, was classified to say, well, it wasn't marked as such. She should have already known. Now, second of all, this is not an employee union versus employer action. This is a national security action. This is a criminal case. It should have been. Had the FBI done it, they wouldn't have said, she want them terminated from federal service. They just said, we want a federal indictment and you go to jail. There's a difference between that and an administrative employee action in the federal civil service system. Now, I don't know about Charlie, but I spent a lot of time in the intelligence services of the United States in the Army. And if I had done anything like it's reported that she's done, I'd be in Leavenworth, and I wouldn't be the only one. You cannot do this. When you're that high up, you're supposed to know what's secret and what isn't. 
Now, for the rest of this, I'm not necessarily sure there's any point in federal law that allows, frankly, under civil service for actually a union. It's one of those cases of they've allowed it. But I noticed Ronald Reagan didn't have too much of a problem crushing Petco in the 80s, and uh, the courts have held him. Uh, so it's, you know, sort of a shaggy area there. Now, as for other government agencies, I don't know which one Charlie and his unit is talking about, but if you are an IRA agent, you're not working at home. Other agencies, I can guarantee you're not going to be set up to work at home. It's not going to happen because they will prosecute you. In fact, there's a new memo that came out this week, and I will provide you with a copy of it, Charlie, within the week, without the header on it, of course, so you can't trace it back to anybody. And if you're wondering, my family was not the uh, sponsor of that. I know a lot of people in the VA, too, and they all got the same damn memo. Uh, that says, if you've got a private email and you talk about any of this or do anything like that, I'll fire you for it. Uh, if you don't understand security, Charlie, I can't figure out how the hell you actually did your job, or God help us, what you want to leave. All right, Joe. All right, thanks. I, th I think this is bullshit, I mean, you know. Because, because well, I mean, we are spending so much time on a stupid thing, and you know, that this investigation, this investigation, that investigation, this court, this court, why? People are starving, people don't have a job, people don't have enough money to live, and you know, congressmen do not know anything, and American people do not know anything how to fix it, and so we talk about, you know, who do who something wrong? Hey, I did something wrong, screw that, move on. Okay, what is your big problem? Let me tell you what problem is. Whole world is watching right now. America has gone to all over the world and tell people, okay, hey, we have free trade. They have told people that you have, have a democracy. They have told people that have free speech. And do you know what? Now we are in the jam and whole world is watching. Okay? We, we, have, we have a... Who knows what speech we have? We, we are free trade, we do not want free trade now. American people say, hey, I'm not winning on this, I do not want it. Okay, when they are winning and they are telling everybody, hey, we have free trade. What kind of thing is that? Okay, let me tell you something. Why I like Hillary Clinton? Very simple. She's the most qualified candidate ever in my lifetime. Because she has experience, she has knowledge, she is articulate, she knows the issue, and there is not a single person in the United States yeah. who knows as much as she knows. Okay, and that is true. That, that is a Republican senator says that. Okay, and a Republican senator would ask that Hillary Clinton sitting with a president against, uh, across the street from the table from you, would you like it? I said, of course I will like it. Do you know why? Because she can talk, and she likes to talk. You know, unlike other, unlike other presidents we had. So that is important. And do you know, do you know why Trump and Rogers Isles and, and, and that, that what you call, banana guy, Steve, Bannon guy, they are criminals. Everybody knows they are criminals. Okay, they were wrong. Okay, nobody has a problem with that. Do you know something? Sometimes you have two girls and you want to select one. Okay, and both are lousy. And you are living in a small town or nothing else. You select the best you have. Otherwise, you know, you go single in a bed. You know, and that's what life is. You have a two job and, and, you, and that's what you offer you have. You take one what you got. Okay, what is belly aching about? I mean, if you have a, if you have a candidate better than Hillary Clinton, put, present him. Okay, and do you know something about, about Bernie Sanders? Okay, 
He, he, he bought a $700,000 house. Okay? Just now, okay? And hey, who knows what? He made a, she, she, she screwed $200,000 of settlement with the school while she was away with company with yeah, her right. husband. Come on, life goes on, I mean. We are not going to screw everybody. And do you know, there, there is so much junk there. So much junk there. We are wasting so much time. Congressional senators and congressmen, they do not know the issue. They don't have time to know the issue. And do you know what they do? Yeah, you know, I was a student, student cabinet here. And they, they comes a half a million dollars budget for sports. It takes us one minute to pass. And you know, and this committee has requested thirty dollars for a copy and that thing because they can have some of the you know people to speak. And we had a half an hour discussion. I mean, come on. You know, this is what we are talking about. Nobody is talking about solving the problem. People are crazy. Who do okay. who somebody wrong? Right. Your time's up. Okay. Next. I, 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 all right. All right, Sid. Let's go. Bernie. 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 Actually, uh, Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice done exactly the same thing. Colin Powell destroyed all his emails. But this is actually nothing but a witch hunt. It's all it really is. <clears throat> now, why did we go into Libya? We sponsored all these militias that want to overthrow Gaddafi. And these militias came in, and they couldn't overthrow them. So what, what happened? The United States comes in with warplanes and bombs Libya and destroys the Gaddafi government. Now, the, the African states, for the most part, supported Gaddafi. Why? Gaddafi, people in Libya, for the most part, had a pretty good living. They had security. But what did we do? We said, he's a dictator, he's a dictator, over and over and over again. Maybe, you know, that's what they do all the time. They can say, this one's a dictator. And they keep repeating the same thing, but they don't say nothing about uh, Saudi Arabia or the Philippines or Chile or anything else. That's their dicta dictatorship. That's why they don't say it. But the main thing is the oil in the region. That's why they went in there. Now, the militias have taken over, but they're just fighting each other. There's no agreement amongst any of them. They're fighting each other, killing each other, and somebody comes in to um, th that area, I forget the name, that they were in, these uh, diplomats, and killed them. Well, in any country, the United States invades. People are apt to overthrow the government or to kill these diplomats. What could happen in Iran a long time? This is very common. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go next. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to go next. Oh, go ahead. You go. You go. You go. I, I said I would forego. Let's go. I'm going to re restart the clock. When you're ready, go ahead. I agree that Hillary Clinton carried a certain amount of back. But on the other hand, at the age of 62, I've had to face some bitter realities of American politics. When I was a boy, people, people of real stature and ability in both parties sought public office. Democrat in those days, that meant like John or Robert Kennedy or Adlai Stevenson. Republican in those days, yeah, that might mean somebody like Richard Nixon, who at that is better than Donald Trump. And I never thought I'd say something like that. <laughs> But Republican also meant somebody like Dwight Eisenhower, somebody like Nelson or Winthrop Rockefeller, somebody even like Barry Goldwater or Robert Taft, people with whose principles I disagreed with, but who were people of stature and ability. And you knew that if one of them took over the presidency of this country, even in the hands of Senator Goldwater or Senator Taft, that the republic would still be safe. I do not have that same confidence that Donald Trump will run this, that democracy and 
will be in his hands will be safe. It will not. And then you have all these ridiculous rumors that are going around about how Hillary is ill and whatnot. Well, I place about as much stock in that in the idea that the reason why Donald Trump is so soft-headed is because he's suffering from syphilis or some other venereal disease. <laughs> this time, <laughs> instead of quoting my favorite commercial remark, Charlie, we're going to drop Charlie's name from it, put Donald's name in there. Sorry, Donald. Only good tasting tuna get to be star kissed. <laughs> and finally, I am not voting for Republicans for anything for this year, not even for clerk of the circuit court. In that race, I am ca I'm not going to even bother to cast the vote since I don't like Dorothy Brown, who's a crook. Instead, my message is simple. Vote out all Republicans all the time. You're halfway uh, there. You're halfway there. Halfway there. <laughs> You're halfway an asshole. <laughs> so you say. I only said halfway. Oh, you guys. I'm pleased that you You know, this said. has been one heck of a crazy election season. Our two party nominates, to use the parlance, crooked Hillary and bloviating Trump, <laughs> are not acceptable at this point. Well, you know, I kind of was doing some research the other day, and I heard something that was quite remarkable from somebody called Gary Johnson. Oh, yeah. And his running mate, William Weld. Certain things like, let's get the government out of your bedroom and out of your pocketbook. Let's stop these insane foreign wars or we're trying to do regime change. Yeah. Let's legalize pot and get this stop this insane war on drugs. It already is. And you know something? He makes the claim that most of us middle road Americans support this thing and we're not going to either the extreme right with the Republicans or the extreme left with Hillary. The thing, the thing that what inspired me about listening to these guys was a small campaign commercial where they Many of you have seen it, but, you know, the Libertarian Party is now on the ballot in all 50 states. Gary Johnson is very, very close to becoming in the presidential debates. And even Jill Stein, who's now quoting it about, I think, on Friday at about 5%, is on the ballot in 46 states. You know, they all talk about free trade and capitalism. But, you know, Trump is talking about a 35% tariff on goods. Hillary is talking about scrapping the TPP. And I know that when the goods are flowing, when you keep the sea lanes open and the goods are flowing, that's the best way to keep and achieve peace. Yeah. Our biggest export security, but we can't get involved with these foreign ventures or wars. What we should have been doing with ISIS is get rid of them and gotten rid of Assad right away through a multinational coalition. The point of the matter is there are viable alternatives out there to Hillary and to what I call crooked Hillary and bloviating Trump. Try looking at the Libertarian Party. Try looking at the Greens. And to quote somebody at the, Demo at the Republican Convention, go take a look at the ballot, exercise your vote, and vote your conscience. Ooh. There are other candidates out there. Besides, I like Gary Johnson. You know something? Did you know he climbed nine mountains? He was recovery, recovering from a broken leg when he climbed Everest. And he's, made the, and he's made the pledge, and he's made the pledge that he won't smoke pot while he's on president. He's a 24 hour commitment. He didn't inhale. Well, uh, he, he was a CEO of a pot company. Yes, Charlie. I, I, I walk the Appalachian Trail. Does that make, make me qualify as a governor? Yes. No, it yes. just makes you qualify that you're healthy and you know, alive and that you'd be able to perform the job well. Yes. Come on, this is nuts. Yes. It's not nuts. I like the libertarian ticket. Yeah. 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 Go, go, yeah. Gary. Let me climb the mountain. <laughs> I have climbed the highest mountain actually well, done so and know what it's like to be in a struggle. What does that have to do with running a government? I there think is, just having a little stamina, Charlie. <laughs> it may not be, but it does play well to the voters. <laughs>
I'm done. Let's get our next strip butter up here. Come on. All right. Keep going. All right. All right, Timmy. All right, you ready? We got too much free time, man. Well, no, we we, we got to get the next guy up here. Brown, come on. Brown's next. The next guy. Brown's next. Brown, 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 I can hand you the mic oh. if you want to do it. Yeah, Brown, what do you want to do, buddy? Stay there. We'll give you the mic. We'll give you the mic. Yeah. We'll All give right. you the mic. Yeah. We'll give him the mic. Yes. All right, no. Brown. Let's hear it for Brown, who's back. All right, this is Brown. Well, I'm sorry that I missed the uh, presentation on religion, uh, but uh, because basically I think that uh, I, the election of a president, while it, it's very important, uh, is not the election of that I'm looking for. I'm looking for God's choice of, of whom he uh, approves and or what he approves or she approves. Yeah, and uh, when it comes to the righteousness of political candidates, I think it's a, rather a, a, a relative matter. And uh, uh, while I'm uh, quite aware of that, uh, uh, the uh, differences are are greater, and I, I would certainly uh, think Hillary was superior to uh, uh, with not only with her experience, but in uh, the uh, motivations uh, for her choices. Uh, I, uh, superior to uh, the uh, Republican candidate who opposes her. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I uh, am probably uh, uh, superior in experience uh, uh, to the uh, uh, all the other candidates, um, I, but I'm looking for, uh, it's not just that she uh, didn't uh, uh, make herself uh, criminally uh, uh, responsible for uh, what was probably a, uh, after a, a, a few years, a, a goof in uh, uh, the security of her communications, uh, but it's probably started out to be uh, advantageous, and she simply didn't go uh, and wasn't advised uh, to uh, go uh, into a, a more secure mode. Uh, but I'm not sure how secure that other mode would be, so I'm uh, unaware of the, the uh, circumstances I cannot make a, a determinative judgment on that. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, whether it's a matter uh, for uh, the discipline of an employee, well, uh, <laughs> she was not simply an employee. She was in a position of <coughs> responsibility uh, to the the president Damn. and she was and to Congress and uh, if uh, uh, Congress wanted to, to impeach her I'm sure that there were a lot of congressmen mostly of uh, the opposing party uh, who would have been delighted to do that and are still uh, looking for an opportunity. I, uh, I I doubt that after all the millions uh, that they spent on investigating the, the, uh, the Clintons back in the 90s 
and uh, it, last year, uh, and in the years so since, uh, they, uh, they have not, not much found, uh, in fact, almost nothing that would be make her criminally culpable. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, on that, I would agree with our speaker. Thank you, Brown. Right, I'm going to go next. All right, go ahead, but we'll, we'll get you up top. All right, all right. Brown, Brown, day. Brown's yeah, got some going. special circumstances we got to allow for tonight, but if we can get up front to bloviate, we're much better off. <laughs> all right, I'm going to bloviate. Bloviate. Okay. Well, $10 worker, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it for you. Don't worry. Easy enough. Look at this. It's talent, so that is true talent. Andy Anderson. Thank you, Andy. You see, All right, next. All right, after you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Good. Okay. We're going to get you, we're going to clear you, and you've got, you've got started. You set, go. All right, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Charlie, great presentation. Yeah. Very detailed. Very detailed. Yes. Good. Good. Enough about emails, though. Let's talk about redistricting. Oh, yeah. Whoa. yeah. yeah. Redistricting. Has anybody seen a district in a lot of these incumbents? They have districts like this on the map. But they're all like a pencil. And then you have other districts that go this way and this way. But there are compact and contiguous, aren't this they? This is rigging, my friends. This yeah. is not fair. <laughs> and who does it? The, well, the well, incumbents well, themselves do it. This is where all my voters are. This is where I'm going to have my district. Is that fair? Uh, yes, it is. What we're going to have, just so everybody knows, in November, what we're going to have is this on the ballot. It's called map amendment. Please vote yes. No. To redo the districting by independents like you and me, fair, equitable, and not pencil thin districts anymore. Redistricting is a way to stay in as an incumbent. I don't know if you guys know or not, but there's 70% of the state senators have no competition. When you go to the polls, you will see your state senator have their name there and no competition. This is because of redistricting. Now, those of you that think it's fair, vote no in November, please. For the rest of you that think it's unfair, vote yes to independent redistricting. Think about that. And in the House, it's I think it's 60%. It's 54. It's 54 or 60 percent. I forget. I'm sorry, but those are unchallenged as well. Yeah. So your state rep will be on your ballot with no name as competition. I don't know about you, but I never give my vote to a, 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 a person on the ballot that has no competition. What's the purpose? All right, so that, that, that's redistricting. MAP amendment's going to be there. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be in there in November. Also, we have some uh, term limits. They want to set term limits. And that will be at your choosing. You can say yes or you can say no. If you like the gridlock that we have in the state of Illinois, you want to say no to term limits and keep them in there. Keep them in there and keep the gridlock. Let's keep having problems over and over that's and over a, and over. That's a false choice. There you go. Just just like that's Charlie. Charlie's going to vote no. Charlie's <laughs> going to vote no. We already know that. Good for you. Choice. Good for you. I'm glad you like the sloppiness and the gridlock and the, all, all the corruption and the... It's and all the, Bruce Rauner's And fault. the ineptness and the ineptness of the whole <laughs> yeah, thing. Been there long enough. Yeah. You, you got... Been there too long it's called... It's called it's called Madigan and Cullerton and 118 chickens. 118 chickens. And you got 58 chickens in the Senate for Cullerton. I don't understand. You got a budget that was $7 billion short. Cullerton got passed from the House to the Senate. And Cullerton, he did the right thing. 
he vetoed it. Because constitutionally, you must pass forward or pass through a balanced budget. Things you get tweaked on the left, on, 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 things you get tweaked on the revenue, they can get tweaked on the expenditures, but it's always a must balance as it flows through all the way to the governor for the final. But it, 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 it's a shame a lot of people are suffering in the state of Illinois. Well, done. All right, thanks, y'all. Vote yes to term limits and vote yes to redistricting. Get rid of that pencil. Thanks. Okay, Andy. <laughs> Andy. Oh, can I get rid of a good guy? Uh, I'd like to thank Charlie for an energetic presentation. Um, I think he may have overlooked uh, one key point. There, have you seen this book called The Clinton War on Women, Charlie? It was one of my slides. That was one of your slides? Did you, did you show the picture of Bill Clinton's uh, sitting next to Bill Cosby? Uh, having a good time at some dinner. I said, what do those two people have in common? Rapists. Well, they're rapists. Uh, Bill Clinton has been assaulting women from the time he was in college, and Hillary Clinton has been psychologically raping those women after Bill got through them, to threaten them with all kinds of things to make them go away. Hillary has been involved in the cover-up of Bill's crimes for the last 35 years. That's one thing. Another thing uh, Charlie uh, forgot to mention, or I, I didn't hear it, was that a, uh, a common defense of, like when a police officer is uh, found guilty or uh, commits a crime or something, uh, the department will destroy all evidence of the crime. Then when somebody comes to say, uh, can I see the Excuse files, me, Andy, uh, just, they just, say, just, we have no evidence of a crime here. Andy, can That's I ask you to stop for a second, it. please? Oh. I just want to remind everybody that, again, we are trying to pay attention to our speakers. There's a lot of side conversations going on, so please continue. Yeah. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons that Charlie is able to claim that there was, uh, they couldn't find a lot of evidence on uh, wrongdoing on Hillary's email server was because she had 300,000 emails wiped clean of her private server as soon as she found out that the government wanted something. So the, this book claims that Richard Nixon would be jealous of Hillary because he didn't burn the tapes, and he got burned for it. Uh, they were taping stuff. Richard Nixon famously had tapes that came out. Well, Hillary learned from her days in the Nixon White House trying to, uh, you know, protect Nixon. So there's a massive amount of evidence that Hillary and Trump are both totally unfit to be anywhere near the White House. Uh, I, this article showed up on Common Dreams today. It's an article saying what we're being asked to do. He said we should adopt a new slogan. Vote for the lying neoliberal warmonger. It's important. Hillary might be the lesser of evil, she might be a warmonger, she might have lied to us a bunch of times, but we have to vote for her because uh, Trump is worse. Well, to paraphrase, if I can paraphrase Martin Luther King when he said, I have a dream. Well, I have a dream about this coming election. I think an excellent turnout would be that Hillary would beat Trump. She would get twice as many votes as Trump. Hillary would get about five Four, maybe six percent. Yeah. Trump would get three percent, and Jill Stein would get about ninety percent. Oh yeah. And let the powers that be in this country force feed us Hillary Clinton after a resounding rejection at the polls. One thing Charlie failed to mention is that Bernie Sanders is not the clear loser. Bernie Sanders is the clear winner of the number of votes. They just changed the vote totals and trashed the votes in many states to make it look like Hillary was the winner. Hillary was announced the winner before they even started counting the votes. And when it turned out that Bernie was going to get more votes in California than Hillary, they just pushed two or three million votes, didn't count. Them. They disenfranchised a massive number of people in Brooklyn to make it look like Hillary was the winner when Bernie was getting massive turnout all over the country. So the, we, we need a change in this country, and voting for the lesser of two evils I don't think is the right thing to do. We have a real clear opportunity this year. One final thing. Who was it that mentioned uh, Jill Stein is reportedly going to be on the ballot 
in 50 states. It, it's 46. It's 46 right now. Libertarians, they're in, they're in are, libertarians are on ballot in all 50 states. I think the Greens are on the ballot in 46. So uh, to say that these people are unelectable is not right. If they're electable, if we vote for them. Okay? Thank you. All right. Andy. 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 Who's next? One second. If you invest $100 on a Jill Stein, you bet $100. And she wins, you get $500,000 online. Ireland, bet, official betting. All right. Any yeah. other rebuttals? Yeah. Okay. I'll all right, on. all right, Don. Let's get up there, everybody. All right, Don. All right, Don. Let's welcome Don back. Let's thank Don for his let's let's thank Don again for his help and rebutting tonight too as well. All right, Don, you ready? All right. Yeah. I um. You know, I've been I've been moderating on and off since probably for about 15 years now, Sub, you know, ever since, going all the way back to when Jeff was, was the moderator. And, and, and I've sometimes substituted for Brahm when he was moderator. I even remember back in the days when Bill Went was moderator. Right. <laughs> and when, you know, there was always a certain unruliness at the College of Complexes, and in a way that was part of the fun. But over the time, I've watched it get worse. I've watched it, people become less civil. The old rules of fair play, debate, I've seen thrown out the window by people on all sides. And, um, and but I don't think this is just about the college. I, I think that I think it's really a larger phenomenon in society. In a way, I suppose it's understandable. People feel like people feel like the stakes are too high to play fair. That it's win at all costs, and and people come to believe that the other side, the people that disagree with them, are evil because they disagree. In a lot of ways, that that ties into this demonization of Hillary Clinton that we have going on. And, but that's, of course, by Republicans. And actually, it isn't only Republicans. Now you've got people on the left who are saying the same things. Um, people who are on the left but are not Democrats, because the Democratic Party isn't left-wing enough for them. Um, but you also have it on the Democrat side, because the majority of Democrats believe that George Bush caused 9-11 on purpose. People don't trust information from the other side. It comes from a side I don't agree with. It's inadmissible to me. I'm not going to agree with it. We don't respect each other anymore. We don't, we don't listen to each other anymore. We just, want to, we just want to say what we want to say. We want to talk over everybody. And we don't want to let the other person have a chance to speak. We don't believe in freedom of speech anymore, really. We believe in freedom of speech for ourselves, which means the freedom of, for me to shout over everybody else and, and, and keep them from talking. If, if we want to be respected, we got to respect other people. You have to be a role model. You have, you have to respect, if you want other people to respect your right to speak, you have to do the same to other people. And, and that's all I'm going to say about that. John Ritchie. John Ritchie. All right. Richie. John all Richie. right. Our moral compass. All right. Any, two. any, any other rebutters tonight? Else, Come on, Don. You want to take over? Or? Babble. No, I'll, I'll be moderator. All right, go ahead. Let's, anybody else? I'll be moderator. Go ahead and uh, babble. Keep, keep okay, going. Okay, is that all right? Is that all you guys can, can come up with? All right. How about this, Charlie? All right. Here. Okay, yeah, hold on. Okay, is, is there anybody else that wants to give a rebuttal speech? Zero. Uh, I just I, want to say that we have to be out here at 845, so that means course. we can keep the rebuttal period, we can keep the rebuttal speeches going uh, until 840. <laughs> Uh, five minutes before to give Charlie time to speak. Um, alternatively, uh, if, uh, if I suppose if everybody who wants to give a rebuttal speech has already spoken, then we could we could go into a second round of rebuttals if that's okay with uh, with everybody here. Uh, as an alternative, we could let Charlie start his rebuttal speech now, and he can talk until uh, until uh, us getting kicked out of the restaurant time. No. How about cutting it down to two minutes on the rebuttals if anyone? 
Second rebuttal. Of second round. Second round rebuttal. Okay, two you, minutes each. What do you think? You think that's a, what do you what do you think about that? Strict two do that? minute no. limit. Two we minutes. got the time. Okay. So let's go. All right. Two minutes. Okay. Oh, do you want to talk, Joe? Yeah, we're okay. going to do it. Two okay. minutes. You didn't say anything before. Oh. <laughs> of course he does. No, right. Shirley, I'm not going to talk about you at all. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Two minutes. No. Although, it might apply. The clock is ticking, buddy. <laughs> yes, I know. I know, I know. And I got a minute and a half, please. Um, for the first time in my life, in this election, in the primary, I took a Democratic ballot. As I always voted Republican. Mostly because I was a Republican election, Republican election judge. And you didn't have any choice unless you want, didn't want to get paid. But I voted for Bernie Sanders. And then I watched, with their emails getting leaked, to find out that the Democratic Party with their superdelegates, which Charlie admires, had already prearranged who the hell the nominee was going to be. And then Bertie, before the convention even, before he even put a platform <laughs> amendment in, caved in and voted for Hillary and said, all you people should swallow the Kool-Aid and vote for Hillary. Well, I ain't going to do that. For the Bertie people out here, if there's any in the audience, and this is a small audience, I've got to admit. If you were smart, you'd vote for the Greens in mass. Therefore, in four years, you might actually have a political party that could get on the ballot in all 50 states, and you would be in control. And you could set the agenda. And then you'd have a three-way election. Libertarians are already doing right. it. That would make sense. But I don't think anybody's got the guts to do it. Joe, where are you going? All right. 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 All some weight, so they can go and say, hey, there's something going wrong. Let's sit down and talk. And we do not have a strong leader, so we do not have a rapport with the president, anything. Barack Obama, if he would have been friendly, he would have made lots of difference. If you're going to be president, <coughs> you have to be friendly with other leaders. And he did not do that, and that bothers me a lot because he achieved less just because he could not do it. He came, he came to the office with a base of bases from American people. No president I know of in recent history who had been so much respected when he was elected. And he just did not understand the issues, or he did not understand the people, or he had some problem with the white people, or whatever it was. But something he did not do, and it's regrettable. Second problem is that, that uh, in our election process, parties should have only registered people voting for the party. Because the other people come, and they bring the issues with party people who work and who are responsible for the party, their, their voices are not heard. And either, I think, uh, if we are going to build a strong, strong party and a strong leaders, we need a people who are empowered and who have something to say about it, and not the outsider who come just before the election and say, "Hey, we want to be pre we want to be president." Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, next. <clears throat> All right. I forgot to mention uh, uh, on September seventeenth, yeah. I'm going to be giving a talk specifically about what the media is covering up and blacking out about what's going on in campaign America this year. Uh, it's taken me a long time to figure out, learn that Ralph Nader was right. For 40 years, Ralph Nader has been saying, we have one political party with two faces, the corporate party. And we, they, they feed us a Democrat, they feed us a Republican, but it's the same billionaires 
buying and selling our politicians. And with the Citizens United yep. Yep. ruling, um, Congress is now, we can brag about it, the Senate and the Congress is the finest running, uh, the smoothest operating, well-paid intellectual whorehouse in the world. <laughs> it's a whorehouse. Yep. And okay. that's why those people have uh, no idea what it means for mainstream Americans to try to make a living or anything else. They're they're being showered with money, millions and millions of dollars from billionaires. Uh, and what's happening in America today, you talk about uh, what Hillary has been ignoring. Hillary and every other high-ranking state official, I think they take an oath of office, uh, don't they, uh, to defend the Constitution? I know military people. But at any rate, uh, they take an oath to uphold the laws of the land, and all of them have been involved in obstruction of justice and the intentional cover-up of the crimes of 9-11. Uh, the forensic evidence now on 9-11 has been published worldwide in tens of thousands of places. There is no debate on what happened on 9-11. So on September 10th, mark this date on your calendar. On September 10th, a man's coming here from Rockford. He's either going to tell us what he's learned about 9-11, or he's going to bury the audience in a, a blizzard of bullshit like nothing that's ever been seen here. So um, it's time that we stop promoting the myth of 9-11 and take our country back and use that trillion dollars a year for everything that would help Americans. Okay? Thank you. Right. Any, hey. other, any other rebutters? David Zucker. Hey. Hey. Two hey. minutes. Hey. Wake you up, <laughs> <laughs> you guys got nothing to say. <laughs> First, I was complaining earlier about how uh, we don't want to get people of uh, top stature to go anywhere for president anymore. I also meant to add that for me, the Clint, uh, Barack Obama and the Clintons, and in that order, represent the very best of what's left after that. And that as for Donald Trump, he represents not simply the bottom of the barrel, I would say he, what he represents is the dirt beneath the barrel. <laughs> um, and finally, last but not least, I'm not going to waste idle time contradicting Andy about 9-11. I've been through this with him before. The only thing I would say simply in this context is that the real problem is George Bush, or was George W. Bush. Recently on the internet, I ran across the best explanation of George W. Bush that I've ever seen. He said he was the anti Midas. Whatever he touched turned to horseshit. All right. Anybody? All right, Victor. Turn the painting off. What? Turn it off. Oh, I'll, 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 oh, you want it, you want it off? I, I just want to make a small announcement. Uh, Chuck okay. is going to present another lecture for us and uh, I when that thing is going to be scheduled please come at 5 p.m. because it's going to be a long one it's about how much money did Hillary get from Goldman Sachs that's going to take a long time and it's a completely different thing so. wow. looking forward to it we have a great democracy don't forget that because we have unlimited hypocrisy. Don't forget <laughs> the deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie, get up there and speak your mind. All right, All right Charlie. Yeah, we had it. I, I don't need to right. Here, well, when you're done, Charlie, gamble us out, too. All right, well, let's thank All right, Tim no, and Dan for helping out. Oh, really let's thank our two helpers here. Uh, uh, couldn't bring the college around without it here. I hope it wasn't too long or too detailed or too boring. Um, it is uh, perhaps not a subject that lends itself to a lot of stuff, but um, if anything, you'll see that I did uh, study the situation and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Joe. There's such a thing called due process, and discipline is progressive in the United States. And um, you can rush the judgment, but you cannot punish someone
for engaging in an activity which was authorized by the person in charge of authorizing it and undertook it without incident. That's important. Well, let's try him. Without incident. And then show up seven some years later and say, uh oh, you're going to get it now, even though nothing happened. That was adversely, there was no adverse impact. What, what, what was the adversity to the United States? And you say there was none. Well, you lost at that point. There's I no, didn't say there yeah, was. Yeah, didn't prove it. No one has come up with any, I'm sorry, did you want to respond? No, you <laughs> said, I said there was no impact. I said we don't know that yet. You, the burden is on There's you. You've got to have it before you. You show up. You you, you can't. When are you gonna When are you gonna discover it? Ten years from now. I've <laughs> watched federal mythical. employees uh, yes, spend listen. 23 months in arbitration listen. with their union until their supervisor got changed, and their supervisor, new supervisor came in and had to rank them immediately, who didn't know them. So that then they can say they got a clean evaluation and therefore drop the charge. The Don't give me that one either. The judge is going to say, "Let's hear what uh, you got." If you don't have it when the hearing and the action starts, they don't say, "Well, we're going to wait and we'll come around ten years later when you might have some, this." Not the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> not in this planet. It just what do you doesn't. Mean, not you, in this planet. you just don't say. Well, well, they, yeah, it's it's ridiculous even to perceive this. Um, Only in federal I'm sorry, civil service. That team, yes. Where's that team, team term limits guy? Where would he go? There's absolutely no reason to remove right here. a public <laughs> official uh, by virtue of some arbitrary and capricious time period. Now, if you could establish that after the first term or the second term or the third term, something takes place that is negative. Or doesn't take place. Wait a minute. Like the budget. Wait a minute. No. A, can, a guy's in office, a gal's in office. And you cannot say that after the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, something happened. Now, it's like saying, well, if I bring home a piece of fruit, I know that it'll spoil within a certain period of time. But you cannot establish that. Without that, I don't perceive any reason for taking any action. Unless you can tell me, as a matter of fact, there's a valid argument that those legislators, in fact, get better. And you're throwing out people who are, all, who are the ones you're, you're, you're precluding them from acting. That's just as valid a, pr a premise oh, as yours. Like as a matter of fact, there's more thing that, there's more substance to it that an experienced person is likely to produce better product than an inexperienced one. Illinois, Are you so what you're saying? An inexperienced person is going to do better yes. than an experienced one. Yes. On what world? Do you every, occupy? every person that can do a household budget is is capable of doing what they do. Steve, in the it's an incontrovertible truth that the experienced that, person is going to be superior to someone who's never what done do it do before. What do they do that's so intelligent? What they, look what, around. What, 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 a broken system. Oh, I don't know. The system is broke. Right. What do they do with so well? Then hire people, CPA. You know, that's not going to happen. But until such time as you can tell me that there is a, 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 a point in time that someone loses their skills or becomes ineffective as a legislator, I'm not going to buy what you're saying. It's just, what? It, it, as a matter of fact, I think the argument is that they become more qualified. They're really good. The Illinois legislature is really good now, aren't they? I would, I would venture best. to say that anybody who's been in a legislature 10 years is, significant, is significantly better or more effective than someone who's been there one hour. 
We have a broken system, sir. How do you? If you're happy, How do you? keep holding them back in. Keep you know, that just doesn't happen. Full, uh, it's, a, it's a complex yeah, activity. Uh, even even the complexities, I carry around a, a handbook of the U.S. Congress. It's about like this, and I wouldn't pretend to know all the procedures and, and whatnot in there, and to say that anybody could walk in and, and be effective immediately, um, that's not realistic. It's just not the case. You don't, you know. Right, uh, I agree. I agree. You know, uh, the other thing, Andy, I'm going to, where's Andy at? Did he go? He, no, he's right there. Uh, <laughs> Andy, there's about 22 conspiracies out there about the Clintons. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the purpose is. They've been floating around for years. No. Um, well, you know, if I may, Charlie, I can tell you what the purpose is. Uh, the, pur the original purpose of the conspiracy theories was to try to keep Bill, back in the early 90s, was to keep Bill Clinton from getting elected. When that didn't work, then the new purpose became to deny him re-election. When that didn't work, the new purpose became to provide some justification for his impeachment. And, and then when, when that didn't work, the new purpose became to keep Hillary Clinton from getting elected to the Senate. And when that didn't work, the new purpose became to stop her from getting elected president, and that's what the purpose is now. Yeah, I mean, I, he's apparently, these are very skillful people at evading prosecution. I, I don't know how that's possible. A lot of, you know, uh, they're really, he certainly is a slick guy, he's like Willie, but um, anyhow, that's it. I hope you learned something. Uh, I please, uh, if anything, look for serious real issues regarding this campaign. Uh, don't get sidetracked by this nonsense, obviously, uh, and promises. I'll tell you, the one thing that really struck me, um, you know, about this campaign, and everyone's got their own views on this. But they asked the one candidate what he was a serious issue, and there's a number of senior citizens in here. If they asked him if someone came in a town hall and they said, what are you going to do about the solvency of, the, of Social Security? And his, his response was, oh, we'll take care of that. Now, if you think that's an adequate response to a serious issue, like someone's, that's how they live, you know. Uh, that person is not getting my vote. I'm sorry, that's not a responsible. And you talk about qualified candidates. You know, we vote for somebody gives that response to say, well, I'll take care of that. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's just, you gotta have just a, a little bit of detail or, and something behind it, you know, that you know the issues. If not, say, I don't know how much I'd have to look further into it. But that's about it. Anyhow, I hope you had some fun. Thanks. We'll, we'll, All right, well, we're going to have our four things on elections here. Okay. Okay. No folks, term that's, uh, limits. That's all. Meeting's adjourned. All right.